Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, Navigator's webinar on ERP considerations for accelerating life science organizations. Um, we'll get started in just a few moments. We've got uh, a number of people already logged on and we're just waiting for a few others. Again, we wanna welcome you all. We'll be started in just a few minutes. Sometimes it takes folks a, a few minutes to log on. So uh, we'll get started probably one or two minutes after the top of the hour. All right, it looks like people are having fairly good luck with connecting. Um, again, we'll just wait one more moment to make sure that all those that want to be here right from the start are able to do that. All right, so good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're located in the country. Welcome to Navigator's ERP Considerations for Accelerating Life Science Organizations. My name is Ralph Hess. I'm Executive Vice President of Sales, Marketing, and Pre-Sales here at Navigator Business Solutions, and I'm really delighted to be able to spend the next 30, maybe 35 minutes with you. Uh, we want to make this a, a really high-value presentation. So as we go through things, feel free to post questions that you may have using the question bot um, in the right-hand portion of your panel. And uh, if I can't address them during the course of the presentation or at the end, we'll certainly get back to you with answers to those questions. So who is Navigator? Um, I'm sure that a number of you are here knowing a little bit about us, but uh, Navigator is a, an SAP partner. Uh, we are a distributor of their cloud-based ERP solutions, and we have a high degree of specialty in life sciences. Now, life sciences is a, is a large kind of industry, industry uh, designation, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of those areas that we specialize in. But typically, a life science organization, organization will come to us when they're trying to grow with their, in their systems or their processes are holding them back from the future they want. That can either be a startup biotech, uh, somebody with an idea that has funding that knows that they need to get an ERP solution in place, or it could be a mature organization that has outgrown the solution that they have and need to take that to the next step. We are exclusively an SAP partner. We're the number one by design partner globally. Um, we have done this before with great success. We use a pre-configured package based on SAP business by design, which enables companies to grow from pre-revenue to and through CGMP and full commercialization and validation. And we have a number of success stories that we can share along the way. 
So what are the questions that we usually hear when we engage with life science companies? When they talk about ERP, oftentimes it's finance that may be driving the bus a little bit in terms of what the requirements are, but very closely after that come in the operations teams, the quality teams, et cetera. And so really the mix of, of questions that we get, get are, you know, what about track and trace? Can the solution support that? What about EBRs or electronic batch records, EDHRs, electronic device history records? What about quality? Uh, you know, can we integrate with our lab testing solution? Do you support GMP? Um, what about validation? The, the uh, 21 CFR part 11, um, do you offer validation services? What about enterprise asset management, preventative maintenance, those types of things? So really our customers come to us with a variety of questions that at times fall outside the realm of some typical ERP solutions. We're going to try to answer some of those questions today, both in terms of presentation and actually showing you the solution so that you have a better idea of what the answer to those questions are using by design from SAP, which becomes the digital core of the platform um, that we bring to the table. Now, by design is a cloud-based ERP written by SAP uh, about 13 years ago. They brought the best of what they knew from the large enterprise, reimagined it into a, an easier to consume and configure platform. And it is what we call a suite in a box approach, meaning that everything that you need at a, at a base level is included in a subscription when you first acquire it. It has pre-built end-to-end process scenarios. It is multi-company, multi-gap, so it's particularly well-suited to multinational and multi-entity corporations. And as you can see from the ribbons across the side, um, wrapped around the box, we do have core functionality for HR, financials, supplier management, CRM, supply chain, project management, plus solution extensions, which we'll talk about in just a few moments. This is all delivered on a very innovative, very current, very modern platform. It's mobile enabled. There is built-in predictive analytics. It has e-learning, which is delivered, uh, embedded workflow, very well documented, and for ease of integration, a very open architecture. So there's 200 and some odd open APIs, so that integration with point solutions external to the digital core become an easy process to go through. Um, the last two there are, are the fact that it's secure and global um, are two things that our customers and life sciences are really looking for. So whether you're manufacturing in a complex supply chain around the globe, by design can support you. If you have concerns about GDPR, data security, any of that, it's a, housed in very highly secure SAP data centers globally. Now, why is SAP Business by Design the right fit? So we have over 15 years of experience implementing by design in these types of, let's just call them regulated environments, FDA regulated environments. And we have customers across the life science spectrum from viral vector manufacturing, gene and CAR T cell therapy, cell banking, sterile finish, pharmaceutical manufacturing and distribution, med device and distribution. So as you can see, when I mentioned that when we talk about life sciences, we're talking about kind of a broad industry designation, we have expertise in all of these particular areas. We do have full alignment and support from the SAP life sciences team. So we really partner closely with them to identify what the right solution is for the prospect. Is if you're very large and you require it, well, we're going to talk about the, the large uh, enterprise port uh, version. Of, of SAP, which is S4 HANA. Um, increasingly, as the year goes on, we'll be talking about S4 Public Cloud. Um, but what we look to align on are those opportunities in those scenarios where really it's a company that can be best served by SAP Business by Design. We do have an SAP Qualified Partner Package, which is developed specifically to support life sciences. So as you saw me talk about the digital core, we have added our own intellectual property. And when I show it to you, you won't be able to say, be able to tell whether it's from SAP or whether it's from Navigator um, for electronic signatures, uh, business partner and product restrictions, CAPA, outsourced manufacturing, uh, additional track and trace capabilities, advanced quality, and advanced warehouse management. 
what we did was identify some of those areas where by design needed to have some advanced functionality added to it in order to meet some of the, the highly demanding requirements of the life science industry. Now, what are the features that are out of the box that make it particularly good? I talked a little bit about that. It's multi-company, multi-country, multi-currency, right out of the box. You don't have to add a new, another version of the solution to be able to support that, right out of the box. It manages complex supply chains. So if you have one of those supply chains where perhaps you're, you're, um, you're, you're manufacturing uh, APIs in another country, you're bringing it in, you're doing some final processing or some final assembly of components manufactured in other countries, um, it can handle all of that. Um, it has identified stock, which we commonly know as lot and batch controlled and registered projects, uh, products for serialization from a track and trace perspective. And there's a fully embedded production within the supply chain portion of the solution that supports CGMP for both discrete and process manufacturing. So it's very good at, at either or a hybrid of both of those. It has embedded quality control. It has embedded warranty tracking for, for uh, med device folks. It has embedded service management capabilities. It is a ready to validate platform and it comes with prepackaged SOPs. So those are all the things that you can count on just by opening the box and installing the software. Or in the case of a cloud solution, uh, you know, registering the, uh, the tenant itself. In terms of compliance, because as we're moving into these, these industries that, that have this high degree of FDA uh, surveillance, um, we have full and complete track and trace via the lot batch and serial number, user authorization and logging control management, Every transaction is marked with a date time user that created it. There's a change log maintained for every update to a document or master, master file record. It has strong bill of material revision control and variant support. Integration to EQMs, uh, integration to network track and trace solutions. And again, those prepackaged SOPs, which are based upon the life science industry uh, that help facilitate the validation process. Now I talked about what's out of the box. As we engage with our customers and as they grow, there's oftentimes the need to integrate with some additional pieces of software, um, whether that be their laboratory information management system. Uh, we just have Labware here as an example. Uh, whether it's a preventative maintenance or enterprise asset management solution like FIX from Rockwell International. Whether it's a QMS or a manufacturing execution solution from Master Control or others, um, of course, SAP delivers the Internet of Things right out of the box and as part of the platform, as well as some intelligent robotics and bots and things like that. Uh, we have integrated with uh, Tracelink for network uh, supply chain tracking. And then we have process validation using our partner, the Arbor Group, um, which is a, a renowned organization for purposes of providing that, that FDA validation service. So we've talked a lot about it. Why don't we actually dive in now and take a look at some of those key elements that we just talked about. So I'm just going to exit my PowerPoint and we'll dive right into the software itself. Now, as I've logged on, I've logged on with a particular user profile. So all of the login controls, password controls, et cetera, um, all of those things that are part of uh, 21 CFR part 11 um, are all available uh, directly out of the box in the, in the controls of the access to the solution. And as I've logged on, I, I've personalized this particular launch pad for purposes of, of uh, this particular webinar as, as well. So as you take a look, you're going to see things that make sense to be able to show you a little bit about. But let's talk about navigation. What we're looking at here is what we refer to as the launch pad. The launch pad is something that you can personalize, meaning that you as a user can adapt, add buttons to, add tiles to, add analytics to, to make it the most productive environment for you. We also have, if we expand the three lines here, what is called the work center area. 
Now, by design, it's called calls these work centers rather than modules because there's a really unique aspect of by design that really is not able to be equaled by, by other competitive solutions. It was all built at the same time. So there, it wasn't a finance solution that they then added supply chain to, that they then added a manufacturing solution to, that they added a service module to. It was all built cohesively at the same time. So as we take a look at any of the different work centers, um, we can access those. So I can either get at a particular function by clicking on one of the buttons, or if I wanted to go into one of the, uh, one of the areas I can go into things like sales orders. You see that expands and gives me the most frequently used portions of the solution uh, or that particular work center in that area. I also have the ability to establish a, a list of shortcuts. So if I don't like to work on tiles, if I don't like to work, work in a kind of a menuing system like the, the uh, work center area uh, provides me, then I can just create a list of, of fast shortcuts that I can get to as I'm going throughout the solution. So let's, um, let's, and I think what this is really showing you um, as I look at this, you're going to see a lot of different work centers here. You're gonna see them go all the way through uh, my, my inbound supply chain, my outbound supply chain. Uh, you're gonna see things about quality, about project management, payroll processing, all my financials, receivables, payables, liquidity management, payment management, general ledger. I just want, I'm not going to dive into any of those, but I want you to understand that that's that sweet in a box approach. Everything is there that you need. You access them by configuring them through the business configuration option. So the way the system is scoped and configured for you is using the business configuration option. It's not coding, it's not scripting, it's actually using a set of checkboxes as part of the business configuration. So let's just kind of collapse that. And let's go through some just kind of some menu walkthroughs or, or some some functional walkthroughs um, so you can see some of the key points that we were talking about earlier in the slides. First, as, as we take a look at it, I've, I've grouped some of these options from my work centers into groupings uh, of tiles. And I can do I can create my own groupings as I want using the personalization mode. Um, I'd invite you to attend one of our webinars on, on the general by design solution to kind of get up to speed on that. But as you notice, I can go ahead and bring those rows into focus as I just tap on those groups as I'm moving across uh, the top of, of the solution. So let's just quickly go into um, a little bit about production models. So what I want to do is, is take a look at a production model and you can, you can, Understand this as really a uh, production model brings together a bill of material and a bill of operation to create a version of what we call a production model. Production models are then used to actually create the work orders that are released to the floor. Well, let's take a look. Uh, you, you can see I have a few of them here, but what I'm most interested in is this BF 1101-3. And this is uh, an example for one of our, one of our, uh, our viral vector manufacturing solutions uh, or implementations that we did, and this is some downstream purified API. So as we take a look, my production model is bringing together product, it's bringing together a bill of material, and it's also bringing together a bill of operation. So if I just go in and edit this quickly, I just wanted to use this to be able to show you a little bit about um, the various elements of of the master data that we have within this within the solution. So here I have my production model. It is bringing together a bill of operations. So as I'm looking at my bill of operations, you can see there's various various really configuration points here about how I want to be able to um, execute in the operation on on this particular um, bill of operation. But let's let's just go into this what we call a boo. Um, so I'm going to click on the view all button so that it gives me a little bit of a better understanding of, of the structure of it. So one of the things that I wanted to show was that we do have our general information about the bill of operation, which some may consider what we call a routing. Um, and what I wanted to show in the structure was that I do have the ability to have multiple steps. So I can have single step or multiple steps. I can have branching within that, that bill of operation. 
But what I wanted to show was that we have integrated quality throughout the solution. So, um, and we'll we'll visit on that in just a moment. But as we take a look, I wanted you to see that I have a make operation and then I have a quality check operation. And when we visit into quality, you'll see um, the inspection that actually gets created or triggered as part of reporting the production out of this bill of operation. So let's go ahead and close that. And then I wanted to uh, show you the product assignment, which is really the assen essentially the bill of material, which is which is being spread out over over the course of that, that uh, execution of that particular uh, production model. So just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of that, of, of what a, a bill of operation looked like, um, the fact that it has the embedded quality in it, which is important. And uh, let's actually, one more thing I wanted to just show was uh, go into the bill of material as well, show you a little bit about the bill of material. Again, I'm going to click on the view all, which exposes mo the majority of the information to me. What you're seeing is regardless of which screen I'm going into, I have a continuous, repetitive, you know, kind of the same look, feel, same action, that type of thing that I can take. So on the bill of materials, some things that I wanted to be able to show you is the fact that I, I do have multiple variants. So I can have multiple variants of, of the same bill of material. Um, in this case, I've, I have a, one that I've performed that I created, and I have a second one that is uh, undergoing some some process. I can take a look at what the input products are for that particular product. You can see any of the additional information about it, any of the item changes, and I have engineering change orders as well. So as I make any changes to this particular product, it's going to require an engineering change order be assigned to that change. We do have engineering change order approval processing um, as well. So you have a well-structured and a well-controlled uh, well environment. One last thing I wanted to do was just drill into the material master as we refer to it. Again, I'm going to click on that view all button and the view all button is going to show me some, some key elements. So just some points that I wanted to point out here was that we obviously have the an item an item coding scheme we have product descriptions additional product descriptions what we can do also is assign different types of tracking so i can have things be lot tracked i can have it optional specified stock meaning that i can create different product specifications if i'm manufacturing this particular product for multiple customers. I can have a different set of specs for each one of those customers. In this case, we're saying it's batch managed. Um, and I also have the ability to do serialization. So I can define at what level I'm going to serialize. Am I going to serialize throughout all of my logistic processes or not? Um, no serialized assignment, or if I just want to do it as we're sending things outbound. So a little bit about the uh, how we establish the controls that we're looking for. Um, as we take a look at uh, some of the planning elements, um, what you're seeing here is I have multiple sites um, that this particular product is going to be stored and processed in. And what this planning allows me to do is do things like uh, define what the source of supply is, whether it's in-house production, whether it's externally purchased, whether I'm procuring it from another one of my facilities. Um, again, there's a whole level of detail I can go in there, but just wanted to kind of touch on that for a little bit. I have quantity restrictions as well, so that if I have any restrictions over a given period or restrictions on a given quantity that needs to go on an order when it's going to a particular location, I can establish the baseline of that and then a fully, um, let's say, configure that as part of our, our customer restrictions as well. But the last piece that I just wanted to quickly show here was the changes. So. What I indicated to you was that there was a change log maintained for each and every change that was made to a data data on a particular master record or an order or a, a, a record. So as we take a look here, you can see this is obviously a, a pretty old item that we've that I've selected, and you can see all the different changes that have been made over the course of time. So I have it date, date and time stamped. I even have a log of what data changed on each record as I'm looking at it. 
So those are just a, a few of the points I wanted to say. That's where you establish what items are going to be tracked and traced. It shows you a little bit about the embedded quality, which we'll, which we'll touch on in just a moment. And it, it also shows you that change log capabilities uh, that I referred to. So let's now quickly go into talking about quality because oftentimes in life science, uh, quality is one of the key constituencies that drives the bus. So within SAP Business by Design, um, another way of navigating that I'm just pointing out here is I have this type ahead search for functionality. So as I take a look, I have my out of the box quality, which allows for quality planning, which is the creation of quality inspection plans and that type of thing. My quality control, which is my work center for being able to monitor what inspections need to be performed. And then Navigator has created an advanced quality solution, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So as I take a look at quality control, I'm going to just quickly go into my inspections. And what I'm going to see is I have um, if you remember, I had an inspection step on my bill of operations. When I completed that, that when I reported some output on that particular production order, it will automatically trigger based upon my final inspection setup of this particular inspection plan uh, to, to actually trigger an inspection, send an alert, say it needs to be inspected. So as I drill into this particular inspection, it's going to access the inspection plan that I've set up for this particular product. If I were to just go into that inspection plan itself, you'll notice that I can, I can easily drill in and around. So I have this inspection to perform. It's essentially telling me, hey, um, it's based on this inspection plan. And just to give you a view of what inspection plans look like, this gives me the opportunity to establish what inspections, my sampling size, my sampling criteria, um, and any quality codes that I might want to establish. Again, I have that change log. I have any notes and any attachments, inspection plans, uh, things like that. So that's a little bit about the, just again, that's the inspection itself. If I now, go and edit this because I want to record my results, what you're going to notice really is, is a couple of different things. So here it's asking me for, for my, my results, the decision I'm going to make, any miscellaneous information that I want to uh, record for it. What this is also showing you is what we call the document flow. So throughout the solution, you have this document flow, which is kind of a chain of events that has happened. So there was a production request, the production request was released, it created a production order, and as a result of that production order starting activity, uh, it triggered this inspection. So again, you have that, tr that traceability, and that's throughout the system, regardless of, of what, what you're looking at. Uh, two things that I just wanted to point out here is that we have our e-signature uh, PIN requirement. So this is the electronic signature um, logic that we've added to SAP Business by Design. And then we also have the ability to create a Kappa case right off of this inspection as well. So out of the box, we're providing the inspection uh, and quality capabilities that are needed really at a base level. Um, and when we understood as we took this into perhaps some larger and more sophisticated organizations, uh, we understood that there needed to be some additional functionality for quality fleshed out. And so as we did undertook that, we, we consulted with a number of our clients who had actually come down from larger SAP solutions, understood where the gaps were between that larger solution and by, des by design's quality, and have come up with this advanced quality module. So as we, as we take a look at the advanced quality planning, um, what it's really doing is bringing the whole concept of some additional qualitative uh, testing results, uh, being able to establish characteristics, being able to uh, have email workflow distributions, printing of, of labels and documents, um, and has its even its own subset of the e-signature. Again, we'll be doing a separate webinar uh, specifically on that module as well. Now, I know I'm running a little bit long, but I'm hoping that that you can stick with me through uh, through the main remainder of what I what I'd like to show here. So I'm just going to collapse the the work center, and what I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and look 
one of the things that I, I wanted to show from a track and trace capability was this ability to do what we call a, an enterprise search. So you'll notice up here, I can search for anything throughout the system. And what I did was uh, rather than type it, I just kind of copied and pasted that particular identified stock or batch um, batch code. And what I was able to do was take a look at everything that has happened to that batch. So I can take a look at all categories. I can take a look at specific business documents. Um, I can, if I want to drill into that identified stock record and take a look at it, I can see right now where it's being stored. I can see what it's called. Um, I can see any attachments. So there was a certificate associated with that. And if I want to show the details of what's occurred to that particular that particular um, batch or lot, I can see that. So here we made it, we transferred in between, we picked it, and we went and shipped that to a customer. So as we take a look at it, again, from a track and trace perspective, you have the ability to be able to see everything that's happened to a lot, to a serial number, et cetera. So, and that's using the enterprise search. That's without having to go into the work center. So if you have to do a, a quick look up on something because somebody makes you a call, you have, you have the ability to be able to do that. Now on all of that quality, obviously reporting becomes a big piece of it. So as I take a look at some of the out of the box reports that we have um, for inspections, you can see that these are views which are created directly by SAP. You have your inspection analysis, lead time by inspection type per week, quality score uh, by inspection type per week, top 10 critical suppliers, number of inspections. So what I wanted to help you understand was right out of the box by SAP, um, there's very good insight into the quality and the results of the quality that are occurring in the system. Now, just really the last piece that I wanted to touch on is to is to take a look at, um, I, I did make mention of the fact that we have a CAPA module, um, we have a recalls module, we have supplier, uh, what we call the ASL or approved approve supplier list by product. We have customer restrictions or customer product approvals, which allow us to control which customers, which locations, et cetera, that we can ship product to. And then I mentioned the whole ECO approvals module as well. And just for an honorable mention, we do have the field services module. Again, all of this out of the box with SAP Business by Design. Okay, the last piece that I really wanted to talk about was what we've been able to do using this platform for various customers. So one customer story that we have is TriRx Pharmaceutical Services. This is actually a, a very kind of growing, fa growingly famous story um, of what was possible when you start as a small organization and grow into a larger organization. So they came to Navigator seeking an ERP solution that could get up and running quickly. You know, they had made a decision to open a facility uh, in Alabama and uh, wanted to get that up and running quickly, um, but they knew that they were going to grow. So it needed to handle multiple facilities, multiple entities, multiple company, uh, country strategy. It needed to be flexible to handle ever-changing contract environment because they are a contract manufacturer. And first and foremost, these were some ex-large SAP folks. They wanted it to not cost a million dollars. Uh, what we were able to deliver was SAP Business by Design, up and running in 12 weeks, a first-year cost at less than 400000 They grew from five people to 200 in less than a year. In the next 18 months after that first year, they added four more facilities in three countries, US, UK, and France. And if you talk to their CEO, they consider the purchase of SAP by Design a strategic decision that's been a great success. So as we take a look at meeting our customers where they are, right at that kind of first phase, um, we can implement to a scope that makes sense for your business where it is today, and then we can grow and scale with you rather significantly in a very short period of time. By the way, that, that solution was validated in the 12 weeks after it was up and running. 
The next story, well, I'm going to let them actually tell the story themselves. So Center for Breakthrough Medicines is, again, a, a real success story for us. It's a real success story for medicine. It's a real success story for SAP. They were kind enough to share a video of, of their own words of how they felt, how things had gone. So what I'm going to do is just play that for you as a way of wrapping up. At CBM, we are all engaged around one mission, and this is to save people's lives. There are thousands of patients, if not millions of patients out there, which are suffering from deadly diseases or devastating diseases. And we help our clients to develop and manufacture therapies to cure those. We knew all along that in order to be able to develop that many therapies for our clients, we need a strong ERP solution. An ERP is an enterprise resource planning system. We require a robust system to harmonize all of the data across the enterprise. What we had looked at when we looked at partners is uh, finding someone who had the technical knowledge along with the business knowledge. Navigator came to us with the best plan of how to put that in place and going through the execution they proved to be worth every dollar we spent. So really what we needed to do is establish a financial backbone uh, along with a supply chain backbone. We were looking for a system that had the ability to do GMP validation, which supports good manufacturing practices. We looked for something that was uh, very user-friendly. We were also looking for a cloud-based system. SAP Business by Design provides basically a suite in a box. So it provides all those capabilities totally integrated so that you don't have to piece individual software pieces together. And having a robust system allows us to really drive operational efficiency to produce a product in time, in full, and deliver it to our clients and their patients. But the real core is making sure that your users are well um, trained. Navigator was able to provide us with on-site support. They're very easy to connect with. They have some very good technical individuals that provides us with what we need during our growth period and also to support our activities. The Center for Breakthrough Medicines has rapid growth plans, and we will have the capacity to develop 80 to 100 with therapies in parallel. We will do all of this one supported by a strong ERP system, making sure that our clients are happy with our delivery at any given point in time. I think uh, we, we really thank our customer um, for, for providing us with that, that video. I think it tells a lot of the story that, that we've been trying to talk about during the course of this webinar. I want to appreciate, I appreciate everybody's time. Um, are there any questions? If you can feel free to type them into the question bot. Um, we did have one about, do we have ex any experience with durable medical equipment companies? Yes, we do. And then Ralph, a couple of quick follow-up questions. How does By Design get the startup model as well versus a fully commercialized business? Yeah, that's a, yeah. Whoever asked that question, thank you very much. Uh, as, as I mentioned, by design is, is really, it's sweet in a box capability allows us to take a, a you know, what we call an emerging company or a, a startup company um, and get financials set up. And if they happen to be in a clinical trial phase, they may just need very light supply chain and then perhaps uh, project management to manage some of those clinical trials. So we can start there. Um, if they happen to be uh, just finance and then some light procurement because they're in the R&D mode, we can handle that as well. If you have a full-blown implementation, such as one of the uh, the TriRx companies, actually three of the TriRx companies, we're actually on an older version of, of SAP called ECC. And we actually took them off of that solution and brought them onto the SAP business by design. So the, the system and the solution and the platform, as I like to refer to it, is robust enough to be able to start small and scale and grow with you, like we're doing with Center for Breakthrough Medicines and TriRx. Um, or if you're already at that level, we're able to very competently and with a highly functional approach, um, be able to replace something that's already in place. And then there was an, another another question. You mentioned validation. Is is a cloud ERP truly validatable? 
Uh, another great question. One, and Sean, you know, that's one we get on, on nearly every every webinar. Every call, every call. Yeah, yeah. So the answer is that there was a myth that if you were in a public cloud multi-tenant type environment that you wouldn't able to be validated because the uh, the change control that's required to support validation wouldn't be able to be accomplished. By design, by SAP, is a validation ready environment. It has been validated uh, for us. It's been validated dozens of times across a, a number of different industries with our customers. Um, and it's the control that SAP has on its product releases that allows that to happen. So um, you can, we, we have busted that myth both uh, with that answer and also with some real examples of, of some rigorous validation that's occurred on this cloud platform. With that, th those are the three questions that were added during the presentation. If there are any more, please pop them in the question and answer widget on the, on the GoToWebinar tool. If that's, I don't see any more at this time. So More I do think I. we can just wrap it up and. Um, be as close to giving everyone the information in the time frame and move forward. Well, again, uh, we here at Navigator appreciate your attendance to this webinar. Hopefully you found the information that was shared helpful. Um, certainly we are available to answer questions as, as follow-ups that, uh, that you may have um, and wish you well for the rest of the week. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good week.